now is one of our favorite parts of the day to, to have these little interesting discussions about yeah. stuff that's not really discussed within the uh, Islamic communities um, as much. Um, so, Asalaamu Alaikum, Sayyid. Wa Alaikum Asalaam wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. It's nice that we end with you actually. You yeah. always were quite in a bubbly, yeah. per, you know. I do, I do what I can, you know, I understand you guys have a very, very long uh, shift, you could say. In the morning, yeah. <laughs> In the morning, it's not easy. I just want you to, like, you know, enjoy this last second. Pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Pleasure having Inshallah. you, Sayyid. Of course, look, we've, we've, we've discussed a whole host of different things over the last couple yes. of episodes. And we're now moving, you know, at first, uh, our conversation's kind of mm. centered around food and halal, not halal. Um, now we're kind of moving into more secular society, I, I guess, yes. um, to sort of business different, and yeah. trade. Uh, and today, um, it's actually a very interesting topic because I think this happens low key within our communities quite a lot. But mm. no one's actually thought maybe to think about the Islamic rule. And it's only when things happen where two people are in agreement, yeah, does it become? Then they go to an yeah. Islamic scholar. Um, just to, for the viewers' benefit, we're talking loans. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> actually mentioned that, right? Um, so we're talking loans um, mm. and everything about loans from. For example, the Islamic perspective, um, time limits. Um, we often actually think about loans and then we, we associate cr credit and yes. interest with it, don't yes. we? Yes. But there are obviously different ways between families and between friends and things like that. So there are, must be different rulings uh, yeah. um, towards giving and you know lending money. Um, so it's not always that we're going to take from a bank and accrue the interest. Mm. Um, so what is the... What would you say? What would pointers would you like to share with us from a fiki perspective of perhaps the interest-based one and then the other mm. like non-interest? Bismillah what? ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, according to uh, Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, uh, the Grand Marja in, in Qom, uh, may Allah protect him and lengthen his life. Um, yes, like you said, there's two types of loans. There's the one with the interest uh, and without interest. Uh, the one with the interest is absolutely haram unless you are compelled. Mm -hmm. Compelled means that maybe you have a mortgage, yes. uh, student loans, mm. which we have, which is very common. I mean, it is, you know, you are compelled to take these out. Otherwise, you know, if you don't have a mortgage, it's very, very difficult to find property uh, to rent or to even live in. Uh, furthermore, with student loans, you know, Islam puts such a, such a high uh, influence on... Um, uh, so importance on education yeah. go as far as China if you have to learn yeah. uh, sometimes we, we have to take out loans in order to mm. uh, you know further study and I think it's very very important that the Muslim community understands the importance of higher education um, you know I know your children have been through higher education yeah. I've, me and my brothers have been through your, yourself uh, Ali Fado and you can see how much it benefits you uh, in terms of a career and even in, your, in terms of your worldview, how you mm. interact in society, yeah, definitely. Uh, something as simple as writing a letter. Mm. Uh, if you're going to write a letter to your MP, if you haven't been to university or have had higher education, let's say even up to A-level, you're going to find that letter very, very difficult to, to write and how to articulate yourself correctly. We've got to give ourselves that voice of being an educated yes. community, whether right. that's in your religious mm -hmm. education or whether that's in a secular society. You need to be able to stand Definitely. your ground and be a good citizen of the, you yes. know, your society. We, we really so want to encourage important. our, our yeah. community to go into further education right. and to invest. And yes, with student loans and with mortgages, mm. um, you are compelled to interest. Uh, that is permissible, that is allowed, because you can't really escape it. Um, otherwise, if, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to take a loan out, um, you know, which you're not compelled to do, that has interest, totally forbidden. Haram. Really? You're not allowed. So if I wanted to buy a car, yes. and I need this car for, to get from A to Z, uh, I don't have the money, yes. and I'd like to take a loan to buy this car. Yes. It'll make my life easier. Yes. You could say in a way I'm compelled to, yes. but I don't have the capital, I don't mm -hmm. have the actual money here. But he has, you have a car that's probably working, but... I you don't know, you a want a nice car. Okay. No, 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 I don't have a car at this moment. You don't have okay. a friend who's, who's gone in this exact uh -huh. situation. If you are compelled, compelled means that, you know, you, you, yeah. you have to, it's not meaning that you've got no choice, but it's like, look, it, it's better that you do. For example, maybe this friend of yours has to travel two, three hours using public transport to get to work. Yeah. If he has a car, it will cut that down to half an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. He'll have more time to do this or that, spend with his family. This person's compelled. Mm. So, you know, then it will be acceptable for mm. him to take out a loan but with, mm. with has interest on it otherwise no if, if it's just that oh you know i'm bored of my car i want to get a new one i want to look nice or you know mm. I want to. oh really you know things like that you, you know that, that's not compulsion so basically if it's not a need yeah 
No, don't do it. Need, then, no. um, Interesting. Okay, what if a person dies and they have a loan? That's sort of like a mortgage or, you know... I mean, yes, definitely. Um, if someone dies... Um, okay, so is this person the one who lent the money or the one who borrowed the money? Borrowed. So there's a borrower. If someone, so I borrowed money. Uh, unfortunately, you, you've I, got I, the debt. I, I've got the debt. Yeah. Unfortunately, I passed away due to unco unforeseen circumstances. Yeah. Inshallah, it's a death of honour. <laughs> um, uh, what would happen is that the inheritance money, uh, you know, what I've left behind, before that gets split up amongst my offspring uh, and those who are entitled to it, mm -hmm. uh, all debts will be paid off first. Mm. So the, the, uh, whatever I've left behind, that money would first be used to pay off all debts and whatever is left over is then distributed and inherited by the next of kin. And if you have it, so s let's go on to the, n the in I don't know if you've got any questions Ali, about the interest, but should we move over to the non-interest type of loan? Because okay. that can have a more implications because it might be on a more personal basis, yes. mm. whereas the other type may have insurance and things. So um, in terms of giving lending um, between friends, so we have a question, should I drop yeah, the question yeah, now? So, Salam, um, one of my friends has asked me to lend her some money. I know she's going through a difficult time, but I'm not sure what to do. Does my husband have a right over the money or not that she wants to lend? Please help. So that's two issues there, I think. This. Yeah. Number one, what should she do in terms of a friend asking mm -hmm. to borrow money? Um, because she doesn't have that yes. money. And then number two is, does her husband have a right to the income that he brings into the yeah. household? So we're, we're assuming that this lady hasn't got any uh, finance of herself. Yeah. Let's say, you know, the husband is the main breadwinner. Um, she probably gets her expenses paid for by her husband. Mm -hmm. Maybe she gets a couple of hundred pounds, um, you know, for, for herself, to, for, for her own leisure. Um, you know, if that money is, is like, if there's a routine where all her expenses are paid for, um, and she has uh, some, you know, a couple of hundred pounds for her own leisure. She, that's what she has, and she's entitled to do what she wants with that money, and she can use that money, um, you know, to, you know, to loan out if she wants to. Right. Um, otherwise, if she doesn't have that leisure money, uh, let's say, you know, in a situation, she dips into the joint account. Yeah, mm. you know, the <laughs> 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 I don't want to cause any domestic <laughs> issues here, <laughs> but um, you know, th there's certain money which mm. a wife is not entitled to. Um, and if she has to, you know, and is there sort of maybe consensus that there's there's a, an agreement beforehand that e either party knows where that money is going? Yes, you know, then, then, then she should con you know, consult with her husband first. Okay. Uh, obviously, I'm not allowed, and no one is allowed to really give money which doesn't belong to them. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so you know, you're going to haram there. But if it's her own money, um, yeah, she is allowed to. And if you allow me, um, I would like to discuss um, the importance and mm. also. The, um, the, the how Islam actually promotes and encourages people to give and to lend. Mm. So, you know, it's not a case of hold on to your money. Yeah. Islam actually says it is mustahab, believe it or not. It is really? mustahab. We have Quranic ayahs and hadith that encourage people to loan out money to friends, to family, to so fellow brethren of the religion. Which one would be better? You've got surplus money. Is it better to give it in charity or is it better to give that opportunity to people to perhaps lend them so that they can maybe do a business, whatever? Which is, is there either or? Both, or? both are, we, we all know the benefits of charity. We, yeah. all, we all understand that our money is going to a good cause and then to help people make their life better. Yeah. But let me give you this hadith in regards to okay. loaning. Uh, this is a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. It is in the book Wasa al Shia, volume 18, page 330. Whoever gives a loan to a faithful and waits until he is able to pay it back, his own wealth will grow, and the angels will pray for him until the debtor pays off his debt. So here, Rasulullah, he says that mm. um, giving out a loan to you know, a brethren of, of the religion. Uh, while that person is you know, trying to pay back or, or that whole period of waiting mm. without that money Number one, your wealth increases And secondly, the angels pray for your sins you know, They pray for this individual who has given the money out Can so. I ask in there then So there's almost this um, Well, there is that sort of insinuation That it's let them give it back when they can afford it mm. But in terms of you know, lending So how we are in the West, we have contracts Yes. And most things in Islam have contracts and understanding of what the... Verbal and written. So what 
is it in the terms of giving it to somebody? So you, I lend money to a friend. Should you have that conversation that I would ex like? I would like it back within a year, and then kind of they don't can't you extend that time? Do you, should you have that conversation of so you're clear with the terms and conditions of what you're lending 100%, and why? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, if there is no time limit given, uh, according to Said Sadiq, mm. um, you the the person who has lent the money has a right to ask for it back whenever right. they, 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 see, they so feel. Yeah. So, because there was no time limit yeah. uh, stimulated. Yeah. So, uh, so it's stipulated, stipulated. Mm -hmm. There was no uh, time limit stipulated. So therefore, the lender has a right to demand it whenever. However, if there is a time limit stipulated, then it is haram for the lender to mm -hmm. ask for it before that time period. Wow, okay. He's not allowed. So if I've given 30 days, uh, for, for someone mm. to pay me back the money I've lent them, it is haram for me to ask, for, demand it within 20 days, 25 days. Mm. But going on, there's another can hadith here. Pardon? Can you request it? You can request. Request is something else. Demand yeah. is something else. Yeah. But let me let me give you this hadith here by uh, Rasulullah and also the family, uh, the Ahlul Bayt. If this is in regards to the person who's lending money, yeah. if he shows compassion to him in his request. He would pass over the path like the swift, bright light, lightning, without reckoning and without torment. And if a Muslim brother complains of difficulty to him and he does not give him a loan, Allah would deny him the paradise on the day he rewards the doers of good deeds. That is also in Wasa al Shia, volume 18, page 331. Mm. That's with the assumption you have the money you're not giving. Yes. It. Yes. So here we say we see mm. that even you know to give compassion to someone to say mm. I want the money back in thirty days and even thirty days later if a person's finding it difficult okay I'll give you an extra fifteen or twenty days um, these people on in akhirah it will be very very easy for them to, mm. to go over the trials and, and tribulations that happen during akhirah and on, on the day of judgment and if that person you know doesn't help a Muslim brother even then. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is... You're accountable. Yes, you wow. are accountable to yeah. it. So, you know, it's very... This is also surprising. Well, I was surprised with reading this was that how Islam encourages the, for, for people to give out loans, to, to help our yeah. Muslim brothers and sisters. And even and when it comes back to paying back, be patient and, and, and be reasonable. But it's what it's saying is that don't, you know, put money before people because at the end you're not here for that. That wealth will remain here. It's not the be all and end all, and if it can help somebody else to look at, you know, to look beyond that, that's mine. Because money does that to people, doesn't it? It's like, you know, you save and save and save but for what? Because at the end, you know, when you pass on, it's not going with you. I mean, um, I think a lot of people save because they think it's a rainy day, and you know, they save for a rainy day, and we live in London where it rains every day. So, mm. you know, um, I think people need to have faith in Allah Subhanahu mm. Wa Taala. Uh, people need to understand. That you know, everyone's going through it's brotherhood as well. It's, indeed, it's in, indeed. And, and the advice I always give to my, my friends mm. and, and, and stuff when it comes to loans, give what you can afford to lose. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, true. Why not? Because it's not, it's not going to bother that person with repaying yeah. it back. It's not going to bother you neither. You know, if you give uh, a loan expecting that this person's not going to pay it back, but well, it's something I can afford to lose, and maybe it will make their life, yeah, you know, not yeah. their, their life, but their situation yeah. a little better. Why not? Mm. You know. That's a very generous thought. Yeah, it's true. Um, so you lend something to somebody, and the bear, the borrower, or you know, the two, one of the friends dies, the debtor. Okay. What happens to that money? Then? So we, we we discussed when uh, someone who has a debt passes away. We mm -hmm. said that out of the inheritance, the money for the debt has to be paid back, right. and then whatever's left over is 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 the um, you know divided and inherited. If it's the opposite way that the lender passes away, mm. it is the duty upon the person who has the debt to pay the heirs. So, um, wh yeah. whatever the lender uh, has left behind, mm -hmm. the, um, the person with the debt has to add to that uh, pot, you could say, and then that gets divided amongst the heirs. Okay, that makes quite. Um, anything you've got, Ali? Um, I was actually saying, because of, of course there's a time limit, right? You, you, yes. you, did, you did mention time limit. What if the person who has borrowed money um, just keeps exceeding past 
the time limit and the lender <laughs> the lender out of his generosity just doesn't you're, you're, mention you're, you're talking out of experience <laughs> no 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 <laughs> but actually does have, I've heard things no, like that happening in, to people if someone has a debt and they have the means to pay it and they procrastinate this yeah. is haram they have committed mm. haram mm. they have to pay back that debt with the, within the agreed time limit so if it's 30 days you pay it on the 30th day if not it should be because you don't you, you can't do it you don't have the money yeah. in total and you know there's, there's negotiations and there's compassion and there's there's you know a means to to uh, facilitate mm. and in order to pay that debt back or maybe you can give it in installments or something you can do something mm. but to, to have the money and procrastinate it's not even that uh I'm, I'm not paying it or you know um uh, I, I, I'm talking about I'll pay it tomorrow or the day after. Haram. Yeah. Really? You're not allowed to do that. No. Serious business. Just Thank you yeah. so much. We have Thank come you. to the end of Definitely this morning and the show. To, to find yeah. out these new revelations that you, you that you didn't know <laughs> of, yeah. and um, hopefully for the viewers as well, that yeah. it's uh, beneficial. Um, thank you so much for your time again this morning, Thank and you. inshallah, another morning. We will meet again and have another discussion. Inshallah, we so will. Much. Thank yeah. you very much. Keep us in your du'as. Mm -hmm. you also. From myself uh, and, and Zara, thank you so much, Saeed. And of course, thank you to the viewers um, for tuning in to another episode of Morning Baraka. Please do tune in to another episode uh, in the near future where we'll be discussing more of these miscellaneous um, but interesting um, topics with Sayyid. Um, and with that, thank you very much for watching. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.